Americans are dying at an extraordinary rate. You could say there are excess deaths. This phenomenon began during the pandemic and isn't as a result of COVID. And yet public health authorities are in no rush to investigate it for some reason. So what happened around the time of the pandemic that's not COVID that could be causing excess deaths? And why are the legacy media and public health agencies not investigating it? Let's have a look. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom together. And what a voyage it is when the truth is often concealed and manipulated, when various interests appear to conspire to manage information in ways that seem advantageous to the interests of the powerful. Remember, you have to be careful about using the word conspiracy because as George Carlin always said, where interests converge, no conspiracy is necessary. These people went to the same universities and fraternities. Please, they're on the same boards of directors. They're on the same country clubs. They have like interests. They yes. don't need to call a meeting. They know what's good for them. We'll be thinking about that as we relay statistical data about excess deaths in the post-pandemic period, particularly in the United States of America. But presumably this will be happening anywhere where measures applied during the pandemic were also applied. Let's have a look at the opaque way that legacy media covers this story. There is grim news today about the state of America's health. The average expected lifespan for a person in this country shrank by over seven months last year, according to the CDC. That's a significant decrease, isn't it? If you read rationalist, secular philosophers, even ones from an evolutionary biological perspective like Steven Pinker, they'll say the great achievement of our age is that the average life expectancy has radically increased, i.e. because our news cycle is so rapid and we're focused on the minutiae of apparent decline across the West, say. We're not noticing that, broadly speaking, bloody hell, from medieval times, people are living a lot longer. Well, what then should we make of it if the average life expectancy drops by seven months in a couple of years? That would mean a ubiquitous change has taken place, wouldn't it? I mean, that's across a population. Life expectancy in the U.S. dropped last year for the second year in a row. That's according to a new report from the CDC. So we looked at that then, right? right. What is it that's contributing to the average life expectancy? Source, yes, sir. What it is is there's been war against Hitler and people have been getting shot. Good, good. That would account for it then because people are in a war. So we'll just write that down. What's happened in the last couple of years that's a bit like a war but has to be spoken about in peculiarly opaque terms? That last comparable drop was back in the early 1940s during the height of World War II. All right, now we want to get to some interesting health news. Dr. Jen, new data showing us that uh, life expectancy has fallen to its lowest level since 1996. What is that about? Yeah, so that's the bad news. The good news is, remember, these are just average statistics. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that is bad, but these are just average. Let's start now repressing and reframing that information as somehow positive so that people remain, broadly speaking, docile and you don't have an uprising because people start to recognize that the elite classes do not respect them, do not care about them, and are managing them into decline and even death. Oh. And there's a lot that you can do for your own personal health and well-being. Yeah, you're an individual. You can do lots of things. Remember all the freedom of choice you had in the last couple of years. Curiously, the same time where these excess deaths are happening. Remember how free you were to make certain medical choices, how free you were to get outside and bloody well exercise. How free you were to make your own choices about holistic medical solutions like vitamin D and maybe even ivermectin. Freedom. It's your fault. You're responsible. But take a look at what these numbers were. Back in 2019, uh, 79 years of age was the average U.S. life expectancy. Then it dropped to 77 years of age in 2020. And now 76.1. Uh, largely, the thinking behind that is... COVID has uh, an impact on that. Extraordinary, really, to try to mitigate and manage those figures. We all know that the average COVID deaths were often over the average age of death generally. There's been a lot of analysis around for and with COVID and increasingly while muted and managed inquiries take place, for example in our country, the UK, collectively people are beginning to understand the nature of that pandemic, what type of mortality and fatality occurred, who was most vulnerable and at risk and who simply wasn't at risk at all. And even in the framework of this mainstream media reporting, even with their figures and their framing, it still doesn't make sense. Almost as if some as yet 
undetermined agent, let me know in the comments what you think it is, has caused a load of deaths. Our rates of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, liver disease, you name it. Um, unfortunately, the life expectancy here in this country is amongst the lowest of all developed nations. That's not a, you know, a, a, an accolade that we want attributed to our country and our overall health. That's not good, is it? There's a massive decline in life expectancy in the most powerful, developed, richest country in the world. Something strange happening. Like in the old days, when we would talk about America, people go, hey, don't attack America. We're not attacking America. We're not attacking ordinary American people. I've lived in America. It's an amazing country, amazing people, beautiful landscape, incredible culture. It's the greatest nation on earth when it comes to contemporary popular culture. But it does also serve as the base for elite establishment globalist interests that act against the interests of American people as well as people across the world. We all know this now, right? Um, but as I said, there's a lot you can do to lower your risk. So I would take this headline with a massive chunk of salt. And then get a booster shot for that salt every couple of months, even though we've only tested that salt on eight mouses. That is not the trend we want to see, no. the life expectancy going down. Let's have a look at some factual information, then see if there's a lot of evidence of people, I don't know, collapsing and dying and passing out in public all of a sudden. Then we will closely look at what could be causing this. Life insurance actuaries are finding that more people are continuing to die at alarming rates, even more than before the pandemic, but cannot be accounted for by COVID. COVID. Of course, there's an attempt to suggest that this is because of COVID, but plainly, and that was even evident in that legacy media reporting, it isn't COVID, but it's contemporaneous with COVID. So can you remember anything else happening? Just let's come on, let's work on this as a planet together. At the time of COVID, did anything else happen that kind of have a massive deleterious impact on human health? I don't know, we just have to look at clues. Did any major organisations, for example, demand some indemnity from legal prosecution? That would be a clue, because that would point, I think, or if anyone said you can't publish any information for 75 years. These kind of things would all be clues. So let's all just together, like Scooby-Doo and the gang, have a look and see if there's any information. For instance, the Society of Actuaries Research Institute found that there was a 34% increase in deaths among working aged people, 35 to 44, in the last quarter of 2022. Hmm, because they're not an at-risk group from COVID, are they? That's not comorbidities, that's not elderly, that's not respiratory conditions, that's working aged people. 34% is sort of unthinkable. If that happened and there wasn't something being concealed, this would be headline news. If this was a story that could be used to say, and therefore everyone better start carrying an ID card, or therefore everyone better remain in their homes, it's because of climate change. We found that because of fossil fuel fumes in the air, 34% of people are dying. Get in your house, give us your car, you will own nothing and be happy. They will be on it. So it's something that's not being investigated. Isn't this extraordinary? Another clue would be, I suppose, if there was a particular industry that paid a lot of money to news media and their advertising that would be good someone should look into that as well also were there any subjects that were heavily censored where true information was censored these are all breadcrumbs out of this forest of death and lies many of them are working age people who are in the prime of their life not anymore who are suffering deaths from cardiac and neurological disorders however the cdc and public health agencies are at a loss to explain these statistics nor is there any apparent urgency on their part to get to the bottom of the crisis well we'd have to look to see if the cdc has any financial relationships with any other industries. Just keep putting all these clues together. Hopefully the COVID inquiry in the UK will get to the bottom of this. Or when Anthony Fauci is, for example, being interviewed by the legacy media, he'll help us because, after all, he is science. The phenomenon is not confined to the US. Is it me? Or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. My cats keep having kittens. The last one's personal. For those who are in the